Prime time. Now from Washington, Sam Donaldson. Good evening. We begin tonight with a modest proposal for solving the crime problem, one being advanced by a doctor and a judge in Houston, Texas. It is a proposal to reduce crime by castrating violent criminals. And indeed, a Houston man charged but not convicted of a sex crime came within a roll of the dice this week of undergoing castration. Sound shocking? Well, whatever you think of it, it is not just a male issue. Women will want to watch this story also, because the people advocating this remedy have something in mind for you too. When you have a stallion that you can't control, you can't train, then you, you uh, castrate him, make him a gelding, and now you've got a manageable animal. And now you say the same thing for human beings. Yes. This is madness. All we need to do is step back and look at the irrationality and sickness of this as a proposal. Judge McSpadden, would you want to be castrated? Certainly not. Well, why do you think anyone else would then? I haven't committed any crimes. Uh, I do not pose a threat to society as some people do. A lot of people in Houston are desperate to do something about an exploding crime wave. Murder, assault, and rape have all increased dramatically there in the last two years. Over 2,500 reports of sexual assault against children came into Houston's Children Protective Services in 1991. Texas jails are so overcrowded, there's now a proposal to give early release to 2,800 prisoners statewide, which has further alarmed the public. Now, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. As many as 100 convicted felons who have only served a fraction of their sentences are expected to hit the streets of Houston tomorrow, and that number could increase to... That's a frightening thought. It scares me. I'm already scared now as it is, and that's only put, you know, deeper fear into me. It was against this highly charged background that 28-year-old Steve Allen Butler came before State District Court Judge Michael McSpadden charged with aggravated sexual assault against a 13-year-old girl. Butler lives two doors down from the girl in one of Houston's highest crime areas. It was here in her house that the girl told police Butler grabbed her by the arm, pulled down her clothes, and forced sex on her on several occasions, beginning in late 1990 or early 1991. The alleged assaults continued for several weeks before they were reported. Yeah. And Butler's neighbors say they never thought of him as being capable of violence. I never known him to do nothing. He always called me, you know, Mr. Montgomery, you That's know, nice and treated me real nice, you know. Still, this was not the first time Butler had gotten in this kind of trouble. In 1990, Butler was given 10 years probation for sexually molesting a seven-year-old girl. And now, on this charge if convicted, he was facing a possible life sentence. Last fall, Butler, in jail awaiting trial, thought he saw a way out. His attorney comes to the court and says, you aren't going to believe this, but I have a young man who's charged with that type of crime who would like to be surgically castrated as the punishment in the case. He came to you? Yes, sir. Butler may have come to Judge McSpadden, but it was McSpadden who indirectly gave him the idea in the first place. Butler had read a newspaper article quoting the judge as endorsing castration for sex offenders. McSpadden, for his part, had gotten the idea from a dinner party with prominent Houston doctor Louis Girard, who at 73 still teaches and sees patients. Violence comes from uh, a high testosterone level or from a hypersensitivity to testosterone. Castration removes the testicles which produce the sperm and also the testosterone. This would take away the sex drive uh, and would reduce the aggressiveness of the individual. Dr. Gerard, what are your qualifications to understand a theory like this and to put it forward? Well, first of all, I'm a, I'm a physician. And uh, you're I, an ophthalmologist. I know, but you you're an eye doctor. A, you become a physician first. Don't forget that. Butler and Judge McSpadden agreed that if Butler were castrated, he would be sentenced to just 10 years probation. Butler's common law wife and the victim's family also agreed to castration. But when the deal became public in early February of this year, a lot of people were appalled. No, you don't take anything away from someone that they were born with. I mean, that's not a punishment. That is cruelty. Stephanie Butler is Steve Butler's sister. 
She and the others in Steve's family scraped together $5,000 to hire attorney Clyde Williams to represent him. Castration, Stephanie says, is not what they paid for. If your brother is castrated, what do you think it will do to him? Destroy him. While Clyde Williams and Judge McSpadden are on their merry way to write their books and give interviews, go on talk shows, this is, this is crazy and I want it to stop. I really do. In Butler's neighborhood and throughout Houston's African-American community, the idea of castration evokes memories of Klan lynching. We must raise our voice and say no. No, Judge McSpadden, there will be no castration in Texas, in the United States, or if we can stop it anywhere around the world. The Reverend Judon Boney is head of the Houston chapter of the Black United Front and was asked by the family to help organize opposition to the deal. What Judge McSpadden has proposed is that Steve Butler, who has not been convicted of anything, who has not pled guilty to anything, who is only the accused, go and have himself castrated this is duress. Judge McSpadden is not God. He is not a 12-person jury. This is too awful a, a, a punishment for one man to hold. The Eighth Amendment to the Constitution prohibits cruel and unusual punishment. But the Supreme Court has never ruled on whether castration is cruel and unusual. What some have called the sexual death penalty hasn't been performed on a criminal in this country in over a century. And those who advocate it now, like Dr. Girard, say that castration is primarily a treatment not a punishment. What I'm talking about is what is being done every day for prostatic cancer and for testicular uh, uh, tumors. Uh, urologists are, all the time are removing the testicles for that. But that's and going to save me, a life. That's going to save a life, but how about saving the lives of the victims of these people? The right cornea has just turned out very well. Dr. Gerard became enraged at the growing violence in Houston through his treatment of some of its victims, like this Vietnamese woman, who during a holdup had ammonia thrown in her eyes. Good afternoon, my name is Mike McSpadden. And Judge McSpadden, who often counsels youngsters in Houston schools on how to keep to the straight and narrow, says he's interested in castration because the present criminal justice system doesn't work. 98% of our society cannot control the 2% causing all the trouble. Does that sound like democracy? But not everyone believes the judge's motive is so pure. What do you think Judge McFadden's motive is here? We believe it is because the judge is titillated by the idea of being the first judge in Texas to castrate this young African-American man. Why is it that African-American males seem to be the first ones to become the guinea pigs, who become the ones who are victims of the experimentation of the system? I think that's a shame that uh, the racial factor always comes up, and it comes up in almost every issue here in Houston. And it was inevitable that it would finally come up here. If Mr. Butler had been white, uh, none of this would have come about. But he's not white. He's black. He's black. And he asked for it. He requested it. That's what everybody seems to forget. He feels that this is the proper treatment for him. Not everyone in Houston's African-American community thinks Butler is the victim of racial prejudice. When Reverend Boney preached on the injustice Butler was facing, the family of the first little girl Butler molested walked out. And I'm sorry, I cannot sit and worship and listen to what they're saying. Like, the, this man is truly innocent and has done anything. Yes, he's molested children. Well, he molested my little niece when she was five years old, and they gave him probation. Some churchgoers clearly approve of castration. But if my brother molested a 13-year-old child, I'll be the one to help him to get castrated or whatever else. If he think that's what he won't, let him try it. It makes us feel good but it doesn't stop sexual assault. Cassandra Thomas is a victim of rape and the director of Houston's Rape Crisis Center, whose domestic violence hotlines received 97% more calls last year than the year before. She says castrating criminals would be counterproductive. It doesn't deal with their feelings of helplessness, their feeling of anger, their feeling of powerlessness, their feeling of out of control. All the things that we know play into why men rape. And so it just deals with the problem between their legs. It doesn't deal with the problem in their head. But Dr. Girard doesn't just advocate castration for sexual offenders. He says it should be used on those who are convicted of any violent crime. And not just on men. And not just on those who volunteer. There are violent women. And uh, my feeling is, and don't forget that, that the ovaries 
uh, produce testosterone in women. And that very well might be the reason that they become violent. And my solution to that would be to remove their ovaries. Remove a woman's ovaries? Yes. Whether she wants that done or not? Try it on a voluntary basis first. And if it works, then I think uh, we should change the laws to allow the judge to make that judgment. If that shocks people, there's more. Dr. Gerard says the final benefit from castration is to reduce the criminal population in future generations. You've written that castration would stop the criminal from reproducing. You say criminals beget criminals. That is true. Criminals usually impregnate multiple women and they, they, they get pregnant and they bring up their children without a father and in poverty. And many times they emulate their, their, their father. That's what the Nazis advocated. That's what Dr. Mengele advocated. Our streets are not safe anymore. What are you going to do? S nobody has made any other suggestions. Such ideas have resulted in such controversy in Houston that the surgeons who had originally agreed to perform the operation backed out, and no other surgeon could be found who would do it. So on Monday, Judge McSpadden withdrew from the case. Steve Butler will not be castrated. But Houston and the country may not have seen the end of this story. Does that mean you're going to stop advocating the idea that you would not ever entertain it again for another prisoner? Certainly not. At all. So next week, there may be another Mr. Butler. There may be another Mr. Butler. And if the court felt that he wanted this treatment because everybody knows the other treatment does not work, yes, the court would consider it. Producing the same results as castration through chemical injection is now being carried out in a few instances in this country. But of course, that's reversible. Just stop taking the chemicals. As for physical castration, nine European countries have practiced it during this century, but gave it up years ago because they could develop no conclusive proof that it had reduced violent crime significantly. In a moment, she was the ultimate material girl. <laughs>